So I have my own little workshop down here in the basement like a lot of people do and it's not heated. Now I kind of weighed out my options, mini split, but I didn't really want to spend the money on that. Same thing with a zoning system and I also considered maybe just buying an electric heater which is cheap enough, but I didn't want to worry about that electric bill every month. Basically what I came up with is a system I call the poor man's zoning system. I'm gonna walk you guys through how I build this thing and I'm even gonna draw up a schematic that you guys can download as a PDF in the description box below. Now I gotta put a disclaimer out here if you guys are gonna copy this. I'm a professional, don't burn your house down, you know the drill. All right, let's jump in. It is a workshop, there's gonna be a lot of sawdust flying around, things like that, and I just wanna keep the ductwork itself clean. So I'm just gonna build a shallow return box that I could stick that filter in, and then we're gonna pull air from this box and mix it with the furnace air. So here's my little return box, connected to it, collar. So we're gonna sit this right on the floor so we could pull the cold air from the floor into our little design here today. So here I am jammed in behind the furnace, a little tight back here, but we're gonna put a starting collar right on the supply side of this plenum. Now, a lot of people would just do that and be done with it and just dump air into the room, um, but that's not really the greatest idea and I'll get this collar in and I'll explain why. Any kind of heating or air conditioning is a recycling process. You can't just dump hot or cold air into a room. You have to put it in, take it out, reheat it, put it back in, take it out, reheat it again. Um, and that's how the temperature keeps climbing up and up and up when you're heating or down and down and down when you're cooling. So just dumping air into a room might get you a couple degrees. If that's all you need, that's cool. But you really want to recycle that air to get the most of what you're trying to do. And that means we need a return. Now, if you know a thing or two, you might just cut a hole in your return plenum here, along with the hole in your supply plenum, um, and then you'll be able to pull air in as you're pushing air out and be able to recycle that air. <clears throat> and in a lot of cases, that might be all you really need. But we're not gonna do that, and here's why. Chemicals, sawdust, occasional cigar smoke. We don't wanna pull all that from our basement workshop here into the main trunk system and spread it throughout the entire house. Uh, that leads to an unhappy wife and women in my little private area in the basement here, which we don't want. So what I'm doing here is I'm applying sort of a blending method. We're, we're gonna take air from the furnace into this Y here, um, and coming off the bottom of this Y is our return duct that's going to the return box we built earlier in the video. And as you can see here, here's our return duct coming back from that Y. Uh, going into our return box with our filter and this white thing you see here that is a one-way damper uh, We only want air coming in this way up to the Y We don't want it being pushed out through this return now The next thing I'm going to add is going to help with that issue a little bit and I'm going to take this inducer motor And I'm going to run it in line with our ductwork So it acts sort of like a booster fan and that's going to help us with a couple of different things uh, Number one, it's going to help draw more heat from the furnace. It's also going to act as sort of a makeup air system in between furnace cycles. I'm gonna wire this thing up so it continues running in between cycles and what that's gonna do when the blower on the furnace is off, the duct work on the system is going to be kind of equalized and this will help pull some of the air from upstairs that's warmer down here into the basement. I'm also going to throw in uh, a heat strip. Now I know I said 
I was trying to stay away from electric heat. But what I'm going to be doing with this as far as the electrical arrangement goes is I'm only going to be running this in between furnace cycles. Only run this when I'm physically down here actually working. It will only run when the thermostat down here is actually calling for heat. I'm only going to use one of these two coils. So I'm not wiring this for 240. I'm just going to bring 120 to it and run in one of the smaller coils. What I'm really doing is just trying to help maintain room temperature in between furnace cycles. So I don't want the room to cool down before the next cycle kicks in and I want to generate just enough heat to kind of try to maintain room temperature. So with the less frequent run times, the smaller pull and wattage, uh, I shouldn't really see too much of an effect on the electric bill. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these two things and I'm going to work them into a small plenum box, like a small plenum heat box um, to run in line just after our Y and then we'll dump this stuff into the room. We'll get to the wiring. Okay, so I got a piece of ductwork here, uh, actually half a piece of ductwork. You can get this at Home Depot. It's not cheap, but I didn't have any on hand, so whatever it is what it is. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to take my heat strip. I'm going to cut this ductwork right down to size, the exact size of the heat strip. We're going to go ahead and box it off, cap it off, and then once we have this thing mounted in the box, we're going to cut a hole in top, put our inducer draft motor on top, uh, we're going to cut a hole in the bottom, connect our flex that's coming from our Y. And so we could draw air past these coils through the inducer motor and onwards into the room. So here's my metal box. <clears throat> Not the prettiest of my work, but it'll do. So let's go ahead and get the inducer motor in here and the heat strip connected. All right, so here she is. We have our inducer motor on the side. We have our heat strip sounded on the top here, and we have a collar on the side. This is where the flex is gonna come in from our Y. Go through the box with the heat strips, come out the inducer motor over here. Uh, so we're about ready to start get ready on the wiring and what I'm going to do is I'm also going to wire into the circuit a thermal limit switch just to make sure this thing doesn't get too hot and I'm also going to make use of a pressure switch off of this inducer motor so that our heat strips cannot run without ensuring that inducer motor is on. Safety stuff. So here's our power and control voltage wiring setup for our booster motor. We have power coming into a switch. That switch is powering a transformer, which then goes on to our contactor, which then goes on to our booster motor. We have the 24 volts coming off of this transformer for our thermostat as our control voltage. Thermostat goes to heat, closes the contactor, turns the blower motor on. So let's go ahead and test it. Let's make sure we have power where we're supposed to. I'm going to go to volts here, turn our power source on, and we'll test for power. And I'm reading 124 there. We're good. Let's see what we got on the transformer. We're reading 27 and a half volts there, so we're good for the test. So I have the thermostat in heat mode right now. I'm going to go ahead and bring it above room temperature, and our booster motor should turn on. Alright, 
So we're going to go ahead and try to shut it off as if the room temperature is satisfied. Bring that temperature back down again. All right, easy enough. That works. So let's move on to the next. All right, for the sake of the length of this video and to salvage at least a little part of my weekend, I went ahead and wired this whole thing up. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to walk you guys through the whole circuit. So what you see right here is what we left off with. We have our power coming in for our booster fan, our transformer, and our contactor. Uh, we have our low voltage coming off, our control. The only thing I did differently here is I did wire a fuse into this so that we can protect all our circuitry from burning out in case there's a short. So we're just running power from there to the fuse and then it's going to the thermostat. The only thing I, other thing I did differently here is I did connect the green wire here to the contactor directly from the G-terminal on the thermostat so that I can run this booster fan continuously from the auto on function on the thermostat if I ever want to. Now down below here, we have a very similar setup. We have our power coming in for our heat strips. We have a transformer for our low voltage control circuit to activate and deactivate our heat strips. And we have a 9340 relay here. So once again, I added a fuse on this circuit as well. And here's how it's gonna basically work. We have power going from our transformer to our number one terminal on our 9340 relay. Now that's going to connect to the number two terminal, which is a normally closed terminal. So this brown wire, um, when this switch is activated, this brown wire goes up to our pressure switch. And you can see our brown wire here going to our pressure switch. Now when our inducer or booster fan is running, that switch will close and we have a wire going to a thermal overload here. Now the heat strip does have a thermal overload on it, so this is the second one. Um, it's rated about 15 degrees below the heat strip itself, but having an extra one doesn't hurt. So it'll leave the thermal overload, it will go to the relay that actually activates the heat strip, and then it will come back down to the transformer as a common to complete that whole circuit. Now, in taking a closer look at the relay, we have a black and white wire here hooked up to the actual coil that activates the switches. And what I have here is this is going back to the control board area inside our actual furnace. So let me take you over there and I'll explain what I'm doing at that end. All right, so what we have here, this is the wire coming from the thermostat on our first floor. So this is the main thermostat controlling the system in the house. Now what I did was I took this white wire here that was on the W terminal. Uh, that is the wire that activates the call for heat and starts the furnace up. I took that off the W terminal and I spliced it to the black wire here that goes back to my relay coil. So when the furnace calls for heat, it's gonna send that 24 volts along that black wire energize that coil. Now on the other side of that relay coil, I have the white wire connected, which comes back here and lands on that W terminal where it originally was gonna go. I'm just borrowing that 24 volts off of that W wire on the call for heat to activate my relay. So here's our black wire that connects to the white wire coming from our thermostat upstairs. That is gonna send a 24 volts into this coil, come back on the white wire, and go back to the furnace control board on the W to activate the uh, sequence of operations to start the heating cycle. Now over here, you can see I have two of these two wires here going from one to two terminals. Now that's a normally closed position, which means when this coil is not energized, this contact is closed and our heat strips can run. So basically right now, it's wired up for the heat strips actually run because our furnace isn't running right now. But once our furnace turns on, it's gonna activate this coil, open that switch, and that will actually deactivate our heat strip. So fairly soon, I'm gonna get started on putting all this wiring together in a PDF schematic that you guys can uh, go to and download if you're interested. I will put a link to that in the description box below when it's ready. Uh, so all we gotta do now is test it out. Let's see how it works. Let's do some thermal tests. Let's see what kind of temperatures we get. So we'll start off with turning on the power for both the booster fan and the heat strips. And what should happen is absolutely nothing because right now the furnace is off. It is not calling for heat. And the thermostat I have down here is also off, not calling for heat. So let's go ahead and turn these both on and see if I'm right. 
what I'm going to do now is we have the power on, nothing's happening. I'm going to go ahead and call for heat on the thermostat here in the basement and our inducer motor and heat strip should kick in. We'll do a little test to see what kind of temperatures we're getting out of that. Um, and the reason why all that's going to happen is because the furnace is not calling for heat right now. All right, so our fan kicked in. Let's see what we got for our temp here. Reading about 72 degrees. Let's see if that goes up as the heat strips kick in. All right, and our temperature is definitely going up now. I'm reading 89 degrees right now. Still climbing. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go over to the furnace. I'm gonna throw a jumper on there and get that furnace up and running. And what should happen then is our inducer motor will continue to run our heat strip should shut down and our furnace will start blowing hot air through the vent. It actually went up to 100 prior to the furnace coming on. When the furnace blower kicked on, the temperature kept increasing and I got it up to about 115 degrees. So we got 115 coming out of here right now, it's pretty warm. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go back over to the furnace, I'm gonna pull that jumper off and see if this inducer motor continues running. Um, and we'll see if those heat strips kick back in again. Furnace kicked out, inducer man's still running. I took a temperature real quick and it dropped down to about 88 degrees. So I'm gonna take another temperature now and see if it's up higher than that, which tells me the heat strips are back on again. And I'm reading 106. So we're doing pretty good. Everything's running as designed. Uh, that's it, man. Let's go see what our room temperature actually is on a thermostat. When we started this whole thing off, I think it was 65 degrees down here. Let's take a look at the thermostat, see where it is now. So as you see, the temperature's already hit 70 here. Not bad. So yeah, I mean, it definitely worked a lot better than I expected. I thought it'd take a couple hours to get up a few degrees, but it was almost uh, probably like 20 minutes at all it took. So, I mean, this, this is not gonna be the real test today because it's a little bit warm out. I think it's like upper 50s. So it probably didn't struggle too much to get to 70 in here, but the real test is gonna be in January when it's like seven out. We'll see. So uh, <clears throat> keep an eye on the comment section. It's gonna be January eventually, and I'll definitely update in there uh, if anybody asks. So that's it. That's the poor man zoning system. Um, and I am definitely poor. So. I'm gonna go enjoy the rest of my weekend, like the three hours of it that's left. And I hope you guys have a good one. Thank you for watching.